Hello guys and welcome to Jerusalem. Come and join me for a landscape photo. Bonjour mesdames et messieurs. Here I am in Jerusalem, in Israel. This is the first time I'm here and I want to make a little tutorial on how to make panels and how to make them very sharp. That's a question I get often is how come do you get so sharp photos? So the first thing to have a sharp photo is to have a good steady tripod. That's the first thing. The second thing is when you take the photo, you put the two second timer on so that you don't touch the camera when you take the photo. And the third thing is you make sure that you focus on what you're looking for. Take, I usually go between f-stop to seven to 11, about that's my range. And I always shoot manual. I try to find a setting, which I found now, I try to find a setting of a photo that I like, which is dark enough. You know how I like to have my photo dark, so I, have, I don't have blown out lights from the city. Once I have something, for example, this photo for me is too, uh, a bit too dark, so I'm gonna put it, change the speed, put it around, yeah, 3.2. So I'm at, I'm at 7.1 and three seconds of exposure. And I'm gonna take, this is a beautiful view of Jerusalem. I'm gonna take several shots and then I'm gonna stitch them in Photoshop and maybe so, do some tricks with it. So that's my first photo. Then I'm just gonna move to my next photo. I don't use a nodal system for the ball head. I don't do that. Uh, I just move it like this. And I take this beautiful shot. I took three shots like this. I did not put my camera like this. I, I, I changed it in just in landscape, three shots in landscape mode. And also what I do is I make sure I go 100% and make sure that my photos are sharp. The first, the th last one, the second one, and the first one. Okay, perfect, they are very sharp. Okay, now let's go to the computer and do some little retouching and magic with it. All right, guys, so I'm back in my room and uh, I've selected these three photos and I want to make a huge panel with it, like 10 feet long and with a very, very, um, a, a lot of sharpness. So I showed you that when I shot the photos, you know, I was on a tripod, I used a timer of two seconds so that I had no shock with the camera whatsoever when the photo was taken. Uh, if you press the I key on, on Lightroom, here I am on Lightroom, the I key you can see, so it's a 3.2 second at 7.1 photo, uh, 35 millimeter on a 2470. So it's a big file. It's, you know, it's 5,616 pixel by 344. Now, each of the three photos, that's the first photo, that's the second photo, and that's the third photo, uh, each of these photos has the exact same settings. You know, I shot manual, so each of them is 3.2 seconds at 7.1. Unfortunately, we didn't have nice clouds here in Jerusalem, but uh, when you make huge panels, it always impresses people. Try to make a panel 10 feet long, which is exactly what I'm going to show you now, and you will see the emotion you get from people. It's huge. Okay, I'm going to press the I key to take this off and let's get cooking, ladies and gentlemen. So you know my formula. I'm going to open up the shadows uh, and I'm going to turn down the highlights. Then I'm going to press the Option key or Alt on Windows and I'm going to go right until I see some city lights, something like that. Perfect. And then I'm going to go into the blacks and I'm going to go on the left. All right. Now that's kind of nice. It's still... Um, it's still a bit too uh, strong for me. You know, the, the highlights is still too strong. So I'm gonna back down the highlights. Yeah, something like that. I think I went a bit too far on the highlights. Okay, now this drags me a lot of attention. So I'm, I'm, I'm gonna see if I can take this one off. Um, I'm gonna make the whole photo a bit more dark. I want a dark feeling. And I think the whole photo is a bit too much yellow, but First, check the sharpness of the photo. Sharpness is pretty good, you know. There's a bit of noise, you know, it's a bit, it's a bit, it's a bit soft, but that's how sharp you can get. I don't think you can get sharper than that. The rest has to be done in post-processing. So, I'm gonna add some clarity to give it an even more punch, and I'm gonna go and use this ND filter here. So I'm gonna put a filter on the top, and I'm gonna add some blue. I want to have a contrast between the blue of the sky and the rest of the city, so I'm going to go blue 
and I think I'm going to lower the exposure. So this is happening only on a gradient, you know that, right, if you follow my podcast. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Now, uh, let me see. Okay, we have some spots here due to the um, sensor that's dusty, so we're going to take care of that. So I'm going to open this. Uh, yeah, make sure this is a bit smaller. And I'm just going to click here. I see one spot here. Now, spots is very important to take out spot when you make big prints because, believe me, on big prints, the only thing you see is a spot, at least you as a photographer, maybe not the rest of the world. That's what I can see now. That's why this new option in Lightroom 5 is beautiful. I'm using Lightroom 4 right now, but Lightroom 5 has this new option where you can really see the spot. I really love that option. Okay, uh, white balance. I think the overall is a bit too yellow, so I'm going to go on daylight. Daylight is pretty cool. See what's going to happen on daylight. Yeah, it's making it a bit more blue. I kind of like that. Um, okay, now this light is driving, dragging my eyes. My eyes goes to this light, so I'm going to take a brush and I'm going to lower the highlights and I'm going to brush. I'm going to make this smaller. I don't have my wheel mouse. I'm using a pad, so and I'm going to brush over here. Okay, maybe lower the exposure. Not so much. Yeah, I just want a bit less attention on it. Let's see how it is before the brush, after the brush. Yeah, it's a bit less attractive. Okay, on the other end, I'm going to click a new brush and I'm going to make a little brush. Uh, this time I'm going to double click to bring back the highlights where they were and the exposure and maybe take the here, which is a bit dark and uh, just to reveal here anything which is a bit dark kind of like that okay that is perfect okay so I'm kind of satisfied with what I did with the first photo I'm gonna click on done so now I'm gonna click on I have all three photos selected remember they were taken manual with the exact same setting so I'm gonna click on sync and I'm going to make sure that um, I, the greater the filter, I want it to be synchronized, but not the brush, because the brush was just for this, uh, this spot. Now, the, the, the spot removal, make sure it's on, because if you've got one spot on one photo, you will have on the two other ones. So that's good to sync. So I'm going to synchronize everything except the brush, I think. And, uh, and let's go. Let's do it. And now, this one must be uh, good. So I just have to make my breath adjustments again. So... Okay, I'm gonna first gonna get the brush like this and like this, so minus exposure, a bit minus highlight. I'm gonna paint over this one. I think it's dragging too much attention. I'm gonna lower the exposure a little bit. Yeah, and just something like that. Okay, I'm gonna make a new brush, go the other way around, make exposure, and I'm gonna bring some more details in the shadows here. I don't like when you have big parts which are in the shadows on, on the photo. I like when you can see everything. You know why? Because the eyes can see everything, but not the camera, so you have to help him with Lightroom 4. It's crazy, isn't it? Okay, maybe a bit too much. I'm going to lower down a little bit. Okay, so that's cool. So I can go to the next photo, the last one. And this one, I'm just going to take the brush. Okay, I have the same brush in before, and I'm just going to, same thing, I'm going to make this a bit more visible. I want to get more details here in this part of the city. Okay, and the whole idea, the whole idea is to get a huge panel that's going to be very sharp and people are just going to walk into your office and going to say, my God, how much? That's the only thing you want them to say, my God, how much? Okay, so now that we've done that, there's one thing that I forgot because I'm a bad boy. So I'm going to go back on number one. Now, number one, I forgot two things, which is very important if we want to get in this sharp workflow thing. First is unable profile correction. That's going to take out any vignetting going on, which is not much because I shot 24-17. 24-17 is a good lens, so not much vignetting. Uh, I always go for the, um, on colors, I always go for the remove chromatic aberration, in case there is some, especially on, on night photos. But very important is the sharpening. Let's zoom in on the photo and see how it is. You see, it's, it's quite noisy. Uh, first thing I'm going to do when there is quite some noise like this is I'm going to go around, uh, I would say about 35 on the luminance noise. Now the luminance noise is the grain, okay? And that really softened the photo. We want to go for a pretty dramatic uh, sharp photo, but that's all right. 
34 luminance and the color I think I'm gonna go the whole way to 70 because the color noise is I don't know if you can see on the video it's little blue spots red spots that you can hardly tell now the sharpening when there is a lot of noise I usually go to 70 uh, not 90 yeah about 70 on the sharpening in Lightroom okay that's the basic sharpening so it because sharpening is gonna bring back the noise now to not to make sure it doesn't bring much so much noise you press the option key and you go on the masking now the masking when it's white the sharpening of 70 is being applied everywhere and when I move to the right anything that is black is not gonna get sharpening so I wanna make sure that any flat surface does not get sharpening something like that okay that's pretty cool okay so we've got a basic sharpening here the, the photo is gonna be very sharp uh, as you printed but that's more also in Photoshop okay um, Overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Maybe I'm going to lower down the exposure. I really want to get a night feeling to this photo. Something like that. And uh, yeah, that's the basic idea. Then I'm going to click on Sync. Everything is, is still um, marked except the brush and Synchronize. And that's going to add what we just did, the lens correction, the sharpening, and the details on all three photos. Okay, I just make sure that I just look real fast all three photos. Okay, that looks good. So now I'm going to right click onto the, the three photos here. Right click, I'm going to edit and merge to panorama in Photoshop. Okay, and that's going to take a little, a few, uh, maybe a minute or two. So, uh, okay, at first I get the photo merge screen. I just go on auto, make sure that vignette removal and geometric distortion correction is not on. I'm going to do that later on with a with a new filter that I love, the wide angle filter. And I'm going to press OK. And uh, I'm going to put on pause uh, because that's going to take a little bit of time to um, merge. Okay, so here we are uh, in Photoshop. Now look, the way it was done is not very nice. So I'm going to go fit screen. Uh, and I'm just going to open my layers, which are here. Okay, I'm going to go to uh, Layers and Flatten Image. That's the first thing that I do. Okay, now I'm going to lower the resolution of this photo, and you should not do that. Uh, I do it for the purpose of this podcast because I don't, you see, I've got a 14,000 word lens photo, and that's going to make a huge, nice print. But I'm going to get it down to uh, 5,000 pixels so that everything goes faster from now on. It's just a little trick. Okay. Then I'm going to duplicate the layer and I'm going to go into filter, adaptive wide angle. Now, adaptive wide angle, what it's going to do is it's going to, I'm going to scale it just a little bit. I did nothing. It already detected that this was a 24 to 70 lens and it corrected everything. On this one, I have nothing to do. I just click OK. And now everything has been, everything is straight. It's not stretched like before. Check it out. Before, after. Okay, I'm going to turn off the, uh, the basic layer. I'm going to take my crop tool and I'm going to crop the photo so that we only have information on what we need. Now, this, is, this looks very small to you, but believe me, this could be over 10,000 pixels large. Very sharp. Let's move in. Let's go to 100%. Okay, and let's go to or to fit screen. Okay, okay look at 100%. Look how sharp it is here. And fit screen. Uh, I think it's a pretty nice photo. Okay, it looks a bit a bit blurry here because that's just my money uh, my uh, yeah monitor that's like that. But it's it's pretty nice. So the one one thing that I do before I go into printing to make sure that it's very sharp, I open up this. Okay, I I'm gonna merge these two by going again layer uh, merge layer. I'm gonna duplicate the layer. And then I'm going to go into Filter, uh, Sharpen, on Shark Mask. And the trick to get a, an incredible sharp uh, photo when you print a large one is to over sharpen it. I usually go one radius and uh, 110 to 130 uh, on the amount, threshold at zero. That's going to over sharpen it. It's going to look too sharp. Now, if I go 100%, check it out. That's the before you see it's soft and now it's very sharp now 
it needs to be over sharped on your screen. It needs to, to look too sharp because when you're going to print it and send it to a lab, it's going to go soft again. And so over sharpening it will make you a print of a quality you won't believe. That's a, a little secret that I found years ago. And you can go ahead and make a 10 foot print of this photo of Jerusalem by night. And you hang it on your wall and people will come in and say, wow, how much? That's the whole trick. Okay, so that's my workflow on making huge, big panoramas. Now, before uh, I leave you guys, I want to show you something. I made a new package here. If you go on my website, photosearch.com, and you go to English Tutorials, you will find out that I have more training on um, Lightroom and Photoshop, mainly Lightroom and Photoshop training. But I added a package called the Amazing Landscape Pack 1. When you click here on the More Info, you come to this page, and on this page, you can see... Basically, uh, what you're buying is 10 RAW files, which are some of my best photo ever taken. And you can see all the before and after here, as I show on the screen. And all the RAW files are DNG files, which are already finished and retouched. But you can just create a virtual copy on your Lightroom, reset it, and try to retouch it to your taste. Then you come to having a huge big file, you can do your own prints, you can use it uh, for your own personal stuff. You can even buy a professional license if you want. Uh, you've got two licenses, a personal license and a pro license, so you can check that out. Thank you very much and see you next week. Okay guys, so I hope you liked that tutorial. Uh, it's really fun being here and uh, as usual, if you like this podcast, please like it and share it on your social network. It helps me grow. I thank you very much for all your help and I'll see you back in Paris next week.